from Crema Media in Johannesburg, this is The Real Economy Report. Consumer electronics producer Samsung Electronics is providing African communities with much needed education and health services not affected by the availability of electricity through its digital village program. Viandi Culver has the story. Samsung earlier this month handed over its first multi-billion dollar digital village to the community of Malibongwe Ridge in Gauteng, providing the community with reliable services. Samsung Africa Head of Public Affairs and Corporate Citizenship, Nta Tule Chenye, tells us more about this first digital village. Yes, the digital village is a, it's an amazing uh, 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 passion of ours as uh, Samsung Electronics uh, Africa. Um, the digital village provides a number of services, you know, uh, critical to those is of course education services as well as health services. You know, and we've added other community services, you know, entrepreneurship and so on to also help, you know, small businesses in the area and so forth. So the facilities that are here, uh, if I've got to enumerate them, so we've got the solar powered internet school that provides, you know, state of the art educational facilities uh, for out of school kids, but also for school going kids that then will come for their afternoon classrooms and so on. We also have got the solar power generator which basically generates clean energy that then powers the administration block, which then is where you know, the NGO that uh, we partner with would manage the facilities from. We also have got in here, for example, the solar power telemedical center. This is where we do you know, diagnosis. Uh, more than more than treatment, you know, because we also have got the solar powered health center, which is the mobile truck outside, where we actually now offer actual treatment, you know, be it uh, you know mother and child services, be it uh, basic uh, eye, ear, you know, uh, 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 services uh, that are required, especially for young people, especially for school-going kids. You know, you want to know that they can hear properly, that they can see properly, so that you don't place uh, a hearing impaired kid at the back of the at last and they miss you know just those basic kind of things so those are the facilities that we've got here adding to the facilities that the NGO that we partner already has which are largely health facilities we have uh, partnered with the uh, Gauteng uh, provincial government uh, represented by the Department of Economic Development especially you know the green technology green economy side of things because of the solar energy component of the work that we do uh, we also partner NGOs that are providing various services here. However, the Digital Village program goes much further than Malibongwe Ridge. Chenye elaborates. We, we're obviously planning for expansion. I mean, the, the response uh, from the communities where we've rolled out these facilities has just been amazing. And, and, and we are not surprised about that because when you think about it, these are the basic services that our people need, especially in underserved communities. This initiative would also not be restricted to South Africa as Samsung was planning to have 10 digital villages operational in 10 separate African countries by the end of the year. We are in within that 10, so we've, we've started with the first three countries, uh, which is South Africa, which is this uh, handover today. We are now shipping equipment as we talk to uh, Ethiopia, we are also shipping to Gabon. Those are the three countries where we have already completed doing the facilities, the digital villages, and we are now shipping them. Uh, for commissioning in those countries. And then we have also now started uh, uh, engaging with the governments uh, for MOUs and all of those uh, with seven other countries. Four countries in West Africa, uh, including Nigeria and Ghana, uh, amongst the four. And then of course, three countries in East Africa, which includes uh, amongst others, Kenya uh, and Tanzania. Uh, and so, those, so by the end of 2014, we would have rolled out 10 of these uh, facilities uh, on the continent. Other news making headlines this week, Robosa's property fund reports a 9% distribution growth and customer focused engineers are key to tackling South Africa's poverty problem. JSE listed real estate investment trust Robosa's property fund increased its distribution growth by 9% as a result of better portfolio fundamentals and a decrease in the overall cost of funding. I'm pleased to announce that We've grown our distribution by 9% in the reporting period to 48.5 cents per unit. <clears throat> our market cap has grown 3.6 uh, billion to 4.2 billion, which is an 80% uh, growth. That price is at the closing price as of 28 February of 3 cents. Our assets under management have grown from 4.6 billion in the reporting period 
to about 7 billion, which is about 2.4 billion uh, additional through acquisitions that we have made <coughs> which to, to transfer in the reporting period, which is about 51% uh, asset growth. South Africa has an opportunity to achieve a similar result to that of China, which has lifted hundreds of millions of its citizens from poverty to prosperity. But the challenge is to develop world-class customer-focused engineers. So, so the, our challenge is to grow this, this focus on the customer and grow world-class customer-focused engineers. And, and we've got to start right across the board, starting with our student members intensive and sharp focus in terms of our student members and their growth and development. We've got to bring to them that the purpose of employment is to serve the customers, to deliver beyond customer expectations, to provide more and more for the customers, product, service, quality, all for total satisfaction and absolute delight. The sharper the focus is on the customer, the greater will be the purpose of business. That's Crema Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insights into South Africa's real economy.